welcome back to Open, everyone. So back in the day, the South Bronx in the 70s was burning, consumed with many fires that ultimately left the community in devastation. And the community primarily consisted of Black and Puerto Ricans, and, well, they received no assistance from city government. Uh, left to fend for themselves, right? So the new documentary, Decade of Fire, reveals this important history of the Bronx and how the community chose to remain, resist, and rebuild. Let's take a look at Decade of Fire. We grew up in rubble. We grew up with burnt out decay all over us. The South Bronx was burning down around us, and nobody seemed to know why. This is a story of what happened to my neighborhood. Everything south and across Bronx Expressway, they just let it burn, and nobody gave a damn. streets where it was teeming with people to become a ghost town. How could city government allow this to happen? Who was in charge? Why? The South Bronx used to be a respectable Jewish neighborhood. It hasn't been bombed, it's been devastated by neglect and the people who live here, mostly immigrants from the Deep South or Puerto Rico. But we didn't burn the Bronx. We were the ones who stayed. I said, no, wait a minute. I have to make my move right now. I made a commitment then, in December 1974, that I was going to put this building back together. The reason we're trying to do all these things is to show an example to the rest of the people in the neighborhood that if you just try, you could make a lot better neighborhood. The federal government can in, come in and wave a wand and do this. We came from this so-called terrible place, the South Bronx. But we would never leave it behind. There you have it, Decade of Fire. Joining us now to tell us more about the film, please welcome co-director and producer Vivian Vasquez and uh, film score composer Arturo Ortiz. Hello and welcome. Hi, thank and you. And congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. This is a long time in the making. So my first question is, decade of fire because of the time span or decade of fire because it took you a decade to execute? We actually laugh about that because it did take us almost 10 years to make the film. But the Bronx burned for 10 years. So it actually it serves both purposes. Yeah. yeah. All right, so Vivian, I know this is primarily your baby. I know there's a team behind this whole project, but uh, let's talk a, a little bit about what inspired you to start collecting this footage to begin with. Like, uh, at what age did you start doing that? So, do uh, you want me to tell you my age? No, no. not at all. <laughs> okay. I'm Deba. No. <laughs> no, so. I know better. So, uh, okay. <laughs> so, actually, We know about, the rules. <laughs> we know the rules. I mean, well, if you want to give fun. it up, you know, but I would never ask that. <laughs> I was just asking, like, when did you start right. feeling this desire to capture the, the, mm -hmm. the story? So, I have lived and worked in the Bronx um, mostly all my life, and, uh, Back in the early 2000s, when the Bill Gates Foundation decided to start small schools, uh, one of my co-producers and I were work colleagues. And what we wanted to do was we started a high school, and we wanted to uh, share Bronx history with the young people. Um, we wrote up a curriculum. Um, my 
co-producer Julia Allian presented a curriculum um, to teach to students. And um, from there, we just began to talk about the history of the Bronx. We began to talk about graffiti. We, talk, we talked about hip hop as an expression of what the young people were going through at the time. And then we began to talk about the fires. Um, Julia was very interested in what happened with the fires. She kept asking me questions like, really? Did you guys have to sleep with your shoes on? Really? You uh, lived without heat and hot water for months? What was that like? Vivian, you should write about it. You should talk about it. And so from then on, we just, you know, brainstormed the idea of sharing the story via film. So that curriculum that we're talking about, that was 10 years ago? Or that was that was 10 years that ago. That was 10 years ago, and yeah. that's how this all started unfolding itself. Right. And so the footage that's used within the film, um, is that personal footage or is that stock footage? Like how are you It's a combination, to, okay. right? So my dad took a lot of film when we were little. Um, so you will see film. Uh, we had to unearth it from a closet in Rio Piedras because he had it all in a box and we sort of were able to unearth all of that. And then we began to conduct research and we went to, you know, um, at Centro for Puerto Rican Studies, we went to NBC. The more we talked to people about the film, the more people were generous and, you know, sharing what film footage was out there. And so we collected as much as we could. So we're going to talk a little bit more about your mm -hmm. storytelling and the perspective it's coming from, but uh, let's get to know Arturo uh, a little bit more because I understand Arturo Ortiz, even though you're like legendary in the music uh, industry, I understand this is your first uh, gig as a film composer. This is my first uh, venture. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. And I definitely have to thank uh, Vivian and uh, Gretchen uh, and Julia and Neda and the whole team for giving me the opportunity, uh, which I took as a, I embraced the challenge, you know, and it's a, plus it's an, unbeliev an unbelievable story that I feel the privilege, you know, of being able to, to use my expertise or use my craft, like to um, support, support the story with, uh, with music. Well, the, the beauty of, of your background, just to share with everyone, is, I mean, you, you know, you're saying pr the privilege, and, and you know, you're quite the humble being because, I mean, you've worked with, like, Ricky Martin, Mark Anthony, I, I know Willie Colon, right? <laughs> and so I'm just going to put it out there because he it, now you've uh, transferred your skills into film composition. However, you know, you've made quite a name for yourself tra traveling the world. With well, these amazing musicians as yourself all that, as well. All that comes as experience and as tools to help support the film. So I think it came at the right time. It's a beautiful transition. And, uh, and it's, a, it's a beautiful adventure to take up on. So know? based on what you've experienced, how did that serve the, you designing the sound and the mood of what people are going to experience? Well, um, because of my experience uh, traveling and touring and playing with a lot of different uh, musicians and artists, I develop a lot of uh, different skills on different types of music. Um, and I'm also a fan of film scoring all my life. So little by little, you know, along the way, you start like digging more and more and more and learning and learning to the point where you put A and B together, and it's like, okay, this is the way that I'm supposed to do this, this is how it works, you know, I use these references, I use this, uh, these subjects, uh, I use all these resources in order to be able to supply the film, you know, with, uh, with the right music. To so, put it, you know, and, this and, partnership, yeah, yeah right. And mm -hmm. so, and we also met and we talked a lot, and so he got to know me exactly. so that he can understand what I wanted. I mean, we had our first sessions. My, my request, I just want drums. Uh, and so, I remember Arturo saying, So, Vivian, what kind of drums? I don't know, I just want drums. And so, you know, he presented his music, and then, uh, you know, we had a process for saying, Oh, yeah, that's what I want. or Sometimes he would say to me, no, you don't want drums in that scene. You want something else. And that was going to be my next question. It's like, which came first, mm -hmm. the music or the scene? Or did you kind of balance it out and go back and forth? 
on, on yeah. what the music presenting the scene and the scene presenting because they, they can feed each other. Right. Well, you know, you have to take into account, or you might not know this, but I was one of the uh, the one that came out the latest because they've been working on the film a lot longer than me. Right. You know, so I really have to, I really I felt the need to accommodate to them. They are the one who have embraced this project for such a long time. I'm knowing the game. So I needed to pay a lot of attention to what they, they felt that it was right and what they were looking for, you know? So. It, sound, it sounds like a, a wonderful synergy. So the film itself, is it from the perspective of a Puerto Rican woman? It is. Um, both my parents are Puerto Rican. I grew up in the old Lincoln Hospital in the South Bronx. I grew up on Leggett and Fox. And, um, you know, uh, being from there in the 1970s, I uh, remember listening to Michael Jackson, you know, James Brown. Um, I remember listening to salsa, of course, you know, Los Panchos. I uh, remember listening to disco, remember listening to rock and roll. Um, and growing up in the area, um, didn't actually understand why my neighborhood was burning. Um, you know, we, I remember looking up in the stars, looking at the sky, hanging out in the fire escape, having a great time. But all the while, my neighborhood was being neglected. It was being abandoned. All the while, um, it began to burn. Um, and, you know, for almost a decade, the Bronx lost 80% of its housing stock. Over 200,000 people were displaced. And we had about 40 fires a day and night. You know, if you ask me, I'll say, yeah, I remember the fires at night. My sister will say, oh, no, they were happened during the day. But there were constant fires. Um, as the kid growing up in the South Bronx, that was normal. It was normalized for us. Growing up in rubble, playing in rubble, uh, was a normal thing. Um, in hindsight, as an adult, the question became, why? What happened? How did that happen? And uh, wait a second. Hmm. Does the film reveal? Yeah. The we backstory explore. of, we of the, right. the motivation behind yes, it? Yes, right, yes. It does. Um, uh, many people that we've spoken to will say, oh, yeah, it was arson, right, Vivian? And yes, there was arson that played a major role in the burning of the Bronx. However, what led it? Right. to the arson behavior, to what we call the vulture effect that happened. What, why did it become so that landlords thought it was okay to burn their buildings? What happened? And it starts early in the 1940s and 50s. Wow, so mm -hmm. it goes all the way back there. So mm -hmm. how long is the film in its entirety? It's about uh, 72 second, um, minutes. Minutes, 72, yeah, 72 minutes, minutes, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. And then um, it's going to premiere at the Doc NYC, right? Mm -hmm. And that's happening on? November 10th, November, Saturday, November 10th. Is that the only day it's, uh, you're actually going to screen it? Yes. For the, the world premiere, that is. Yes, that's our right? world premiere. And so what do you want people to leave with? Um, what we want people to leave with is that, um, first of all, we as a people, of uh, people of color in the South Bronx, it wasn't our fault. We didn't burn the South Bronx. Um, and the second thing is that we actually helped saved it, that people stayed, people uh, worked with each other. There was a huge sense of community where people supported each other and began to rebuild. People began to resist, they began to rebuild, and they began to fight for change. Um, and the other thing that we want to talk about here is that it's becoming too familiar now because our folks in the South Bronx and in other places in the Bronx are at threat of gentrification. So, so it's presenting itself in another form. That's right. Right. And so here's an eye opener of the same pattern kind of repeating itself in another form. Right. Plus right. it's a fantastic story. I mean, a lot of people know what happened, but most of the people don't know how. How, right. And that's the yeah. most amazing part of it. Right. And thank you. Thank you for producing this film. Thank you, Arturo, thank for, you. for serenading us. us inside of it. Because I can tell, I can tell there's a, a love uh, 
oh, story yes. inside of the music as well. So thank you for that. And Vivian, of course, you know, for dedicating uh, a decade to making sure that this story is told. Congratulations. Thank you so much. All right, yeah. and you guys, once again, the Decade of Fire will be showcased at the Doc NYC Festival. That is taking place Saturday, November 10th at the School of Visual Arts Theater um, on 333 West 23rd Street, and that's happening at 4.15 p.m. For more information, you can visit decadeoffire.com. We have to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with more open. <laughs> 